I'm here with tonight's A main of the Knoxville Nationals winner, Donnie Schatz. First of all, Donnie, congratulations, your eighth Knoxville Nationals. How does that feel? Uh, it's unbelievable. It feels so uh, so unreal, uh, like it's not happening. <laughs> you know, I uh, can't. Uh, I haven't got a chance to really get with the team and, and uh, celebrate, but uh, I definitely want to enjoy this. Um, you know, we raced good, good and hard with Brian. I had an awesome car all week long. Um, not very often you get a car that good, but uh, these guys have worked awful hard to get us in this position, and um, they put it on my shoulders when we went. So, um, you know, I made uh, 49 good laps. You just had one or two bad ones, and uh, can't wait to celebrate. Last year you had to come from the B. This time you start on the pole of the A. How much easier was it tonight than last year? I don't know that it was easier. You know, when you take uh, four of the best cars and put them in the front two rows the way they were, I knew Kerry was going to be good and Shane was going to be good and uh, definitely Brown. So, you know, you, you have to, you just have to make sure you're carrying enough speed and you're not making any mistakes. And, and as the race changes, sometimes the, the worst place to be in is, is leading. Um, you know, but we've always tried to, to get better at that. I'm, I'm not one that makes the best decisions when I'm leading. So, um, you know, Brian got by us and, and we we had to race back by him, which was great for us, and um, you know I had to adapt to the change in surface and change my line a little bit. So um, that, it felt uh, felt rewarding to get back by him after that. But um, you know the, the race, uh, I was surprised how how uh, he was able to get us get around on the top of one or two that good because I kept trying it early when we got to lap traffic and couldn't make it work. But um, you know that's the way it works. Uh, it's all about making the right decisions, and I made a bad decision, uh, he made a bad decision, and uh, we come out on top. So it's uh, it feels unbelievable. I see a handful of drivers that when they get past, they kind of lose their composure, lose their cool. It almost seems like when somebody passes you, it motivates you more. How do you keep your composure in a race car when something like that happens? Well, it's just the way you're raised. Um, you know, uh, racing with my father, I had somebody ridicule me for 10 years. And, um, you know, you're right. It's, it's what you want to do. But, um, you know, you learn how to keep yourself calm and cool in them situations and keep your car underneath you. And uh, when you have a teammate like Steve Kinzer, you, you learn a lot from him in that situation, too. So, so, um, you know, it's something that's uh, very rewarding to, to have happen and, and learn. But uh, there are days when, when uh, you have to throw that out the window. You have to be more aggressive. And, um, you know, that's where I lack a little bit. So I'm working on that, and I'll, I'll get that better and uh, try to be a little better at it. Well, congratulations on your eighth Knoxville Nationals and also a happy birthday, Donnie. Thank you. I'm here with tonight's second place finisher at the Knoxville Nationals, Brian Brown. Brian, third year in a row, you ran second to Donnie. You grabbed the lead really quick. The grandstands went crazy. Lost it. Describe to me what happened out there. Um, really felt like the whole race I probably had a second place car, and uh, even even there towards uh, the middle part when we got you know with that yellow with ten to go, I felt like you know, I don't really know how I'm going to beat him. You know, he's just kind of driving away and was just a little bit more maneuverable, and I just I didn't know how I was going to beat him. And, um, I pulled my wing back a little bit. I was kind of laid left on my left rear and trying to get myself a little bit more plugged in. I pulled my wing back there, and it's like we just uh, kind of took back off. And I don't know if at the bottom slowed down or I got better, um, but we were able to catch him there. And um, I was five or six, seven to go. You know, I, I, I knew to myself I probably shouldn't be going this quick to beat him or to, to pass him because I know if I showed him he was going to get his elbows up. And but. I felt like if I would get caught up on the cushion, I wasn't going to get an opportunity. So I had to go. Um, I got by him, went to the bottom, protected the bottom, and then um, got nervous and, and kind of chickened out on the bottom there and went back to the top and maybe chickened out. I just I think at the end of the day, maybe he had a little bit better car when it counted. and um, Another second. So uh, we're definitely um, – Disappointed, but like I said up there, we're, we're still grateful. This place doesn't know us a thing, and um, we're going to come back here next year and try twice as hard and uh, see what we can do. Just proud of our whole team, you know, Chad Morgan, uh, Zach Thomas, Greg King, Mark Clemens, uh, Schnook, Grandpa, Clem, everybody that works on this thing uh, does a good job, along with, you know, FEP being the presenting sponsor in Casey's General Store, um, Searsboro M Impact, uh, MC Power, Charlie Garrett, Maxim. Um, they deserve to win this race, and one of these days we're going to do it. You said after you got by him, you were really consistent on the top, and you tried the bottom. Do you think if you would have stayed on the top, you would have stayed in front of him? I hit the bottom pretty good one down there when I, when I needed to to block him, but it's just so narrow, and, I, and I've been missing it so many times that, you know, I would have killed myself if I would have went down there and ran the bottom and, and missed it and let him sneak back by. I should have said, you know, you should have just stayed what you're doing, what you're doing. You're dang if you do and dang if you don't, you know. you know, no, Unless you beat him, it's disappointing. So uh, I think the biggest thing is is I just want to congratulate Donnie Schatz. Uh, Eight out of nine, and you know, and being able to to do such a feat like that is, uh, I'm a fan too, and uh, that's pretty special. We're living, we're watching history, and 
somebody's going to beat him one day, one sooner or later, and um, uh, hopefully it's me. When you passed him, the whole grandstands went crazy. The energy. Can you ever feel that out there in the race car? Um, no, I didn't feel it, but I, for some reason I don't know what it was. I, I, with I got beside him up off four, and you know, close to him, I kind of just glanced out of my right eye and looked like the whole crowd was on their feet. And I thought, gosh darn, I got to dig deep and try to find something a little bit extra there. Because at that point, I was kind of staying with him, and and I, you know, uh, I know how I'm, how what it would mean to these fans for somebody to beat him. <laughs> and I think for being a local, if we could beat him, I think it would be pretty special. And um, we just came up short. I mean, there's really, you can make an excuse. You can say this, say that. Uh, Donnie Schatz beat us, and um, we ran second. Well, congratulations to Brian Brown and the whole FVP team on tonight's second place finish here at the Knoxville Nationals. I'm here with Kerry Madsen, tonight's third place finisher of the Knoxville Nationals. Kerry, you and your whole American racing team have been absolutely incredible this year. To walk away with a third place at the Knoxville Nationals, how are you and your team feeling tonight? Oh, it, it's it's mind-boggling, mind boggling, Natalie. Um, the last two months have just been, I mean, you couldn't dream about it. Um, you know, and, and I'm actually like double-edged because I'm like slightly disappointed not to win. Uh, we, did, we weren't quick enough to win, but on the other hand, I'm so proud for our organization, our team, our sponsors, our owners, that we got a podium at the Knoxville Nationals. Um, it's just been just fantastic. And uh, um, just, you know, I'm so excited because with our crew chief, Tyler Swank, we've only been together eight months and you just, you know, you feel excited because you feel like the future's bright and uh, it just feels like a building block for the future. Sometimes drivers will go through different crew chiefs. What is it about Tyler when you guys met that just seemed like all the chemistry just fell together? Tyler's a team player and uh, he believes in his people. He believes in the people on his teams and not just a driver, he believes in the uh, the car chief, he believes in the tire guy. He just, you know, he's just put so much confidence in everybody and he's the best people manager I've seen and um, you know the results show um, and uh, it's just great when you've got a guy on your corner that believes in you and uh, anything's possible when people believe in you. On the halfway mark at lap 25 what did Tyler tell you to get you pumped up? Yeah he just asked me some questions and I uh, answered them and then next thing you know I hear dur, 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 dur. <laughs> sounded like he changed about 20 shocks but definitely made the car better and uh, you know, at, towards the end there, when Donnie and uh, Brian were battling, I, I actually thought, oh, I actually made some ground, but just weren't quite good enough. And um, but uh, you know, like I said, a building block, and just uh, excited for the rest of the year. Well, you've won two big races, third at the Knoxville Nationals. Congratulations to you and your whole American Racing team, Kerry. It's just been mind blowing. I just can't believe it. So it's fantastic. Congratulations.